Apparently there's no money left, or it would seem from the budget of one particular council that was just sent to me and the things they're doing to reduce costs. It seems that perhaps people are just not paying the council tax. Uh, maybe that's because of these strange things that they want to do and people are a bit upset with it. Hello, welcome to the show. Uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody who turned up at the West End to uh, see myself, Clive DeCarl and Matt Letizier and Rachel Matthews who were all there on stage uh, giving it... Uh, our opinions and things. We did a, a live show. It was rather jolly to be standing on a West End stage and doing all of that. So thank you so much for coming along if you did. Um, it was very nice to meet you. And I apologise that we all had to get off and out the building rather quickly. Otherwise, we would have spent more time saying hello and talking to people. But the theatre had another function and they just needed us to be out. So we had to obey. We had to obey. We do our best. Anyway, uh, so going back to the council, I had this fascinating email this morning and I thought I'd share um, it with you. So thank you to Nikki who sent this in. And she says here, Richard, this is our local council's budget. It's horrifying. Money being wasted in so many other questionable areas. Our trees are now being chopped down all over Aberdeenshire and sold abroad. Strangely, our beaches and towns all over Aberdeenshire are being fully regenerated, costing millions, but no money to keep our children safe. This needs to be addressed. Where has the money come for, from for this? My question is, is this happening anywhere else? Full attack on our children and their education. She then goes on to say that I actually home educate my child, but with no help from the government. I'm a single parent, really struggling to support my choice to home educate, but won't have my child in their system. And to be honest, I don't blame you. This needs to be addressed considering the amount of parents who are now choosing to home educate and protect their children. So then let's have a look at the council budget. Now, this is in Scotland, and I don't know if that's um, it works differently in Scotland to, say, England and Wales, but let's, let's compare it. And if you are doing any of this that um, Rachel Matthews, who was uh, with us yesterday on the uh, West End stage talking about Council Watch and how she is holding with her team the, ca the Colchester Council to account... Uh, and pointing out the madness of net zero and the wasteful money that's going towards these projects which are doing absolutely bugger all to save the planet. Um, I mean, at some point, we've got to really address the fact that the uh, man-made global warming myth is just that. It's a myth created to cause all these problems that we are now seeing. But anyway, we'll keep pressing that point as we go so it may be different in different parts of the country or you may be interested in getting going and and putting your council on notice because it's only at ground level ground up that we're going to make a big difference if we start turning our backs on these councils i'll talk about that in a bit moment but let's just finish looking at this so here we are the council budget key points following the passing of abendeershire council's latest budget yesterday here are the key points, says Nikki. First, the removal of school crossing patrols. This is a non-statutory service and remains the responsibility of parents and carers to ensure the safety of their children on the full journey to and from school. Halting recruitment, deleting current vacancies, consulting affected employees in line with HR policies, communicating with school parents and facilitating of community-led solutions. So, in other words, the lollipop lady is going. Um, tree maintenance. Here we go. Maintenance of tree population across Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire being reduced and will move to essential only. Is that happening in your area? Potholes. Here we are. We all love the potholes, don't we? We love to wreck our cars and vans and our bicycles and fall foul of falling off and having accidents thanks to potholes. It says here the focus of activity will be more towards safety critical elements ooh, um, normally associated with reactive repairs such as potholes, ensuring network safety. A network level, data driven, risk based approach to all that corporate speak will be developed further to ensure the impact on the network of a whole is minimised 
and an equitable service is delivered across all areas. Long-term asset management improvements will be programmed over a long delivery horizon. Excuse me? What is a long delivery horizon? All this corporate speak that is designed to confuse. Basically, we're only going to do those ones that we are likely to be liable for. Now, the thing is, if you've got potholes, what I would do is I would take a photograph of it, send it to the council and say, right, who's in charge of this? Find out the name who's in charge of dealing with the potholes or the highways and things, whomever it is, and say, right, here's a pothole. I'm reporting that to you. I now make you personally liable for the re uh, repair of this pothole. If you are a council taxpayer or any kind of taxpayer, then we have asked you, remember, they are our servants. They don't know that. They, they've forgotten what the word servant means. But we need to now just get on their case. Every single thing. Hang on a minute. You are personally liable. If somebody falls off their bicycle as a result of this, you've been notified. You're personally liable. I think that might make them jump through hoops. So they want to reduce the potholes, eh? Uh, you know why they want to reduce the potholes, of course, fixing the potholes. Um, so they don't want to reduce the potholes, they just want to reduce the fixing of the poles because they don't want you in the cars. I think they think if it goes back to sort of bumpy roads and we wreck as many cars as possible, then people won't buy cars and uh, then they won't need them. But if they want to get us on bicycles and walking all the time, there's no point having people having twisted ankles and dented bike rims. Anyway, let's go back and see what else is on here. Open parks and spaces, or rather parks and open spaces. It says uh, the level of maintenance to parks, weed control, pruning will be reduced. Oh, re will it? A refocusing. Here we go. More corporate speak. A refocusing of resources in line with area priorities will m mitigate the impact Excuse me, what does that mean? What will mitigate? You mean you're just going to let things overgrow and you're not going to make things nice. You're not going to improve the park so people actually want to go there and spend time in them and relax. I thought the point was to get everybody into a 15-minute city that they want to stay in rather than just make it look really abysmal. No doubt they won't be picking up any rubbish or they won't provide bins and they won't empty the bins because they can't afford to do that. Who knows? Let's move on. Car parks. Here we go. Free car parking spaces are to be removed at St. Mary's uh, at Banff, uh, Hanover Street in Fraserburgh and Burn Lane in Inv... Now I'm going to pronounce that wrong, aren't I? Inverurie, Inverurie and High Street in Turriff. All spaces in these locations will be subject to charges. Yes, because we hate your guts so much, we've got to extract more money. And you bet your bottom dollar, it will be only on the smartphone. It'll only be one you've got to park and pay on your smartphone. Down download an app and make sure you've got battery. Make sure you've got access to your bank account. Make sure that that data can be taken from you. No longer can you park free in your own council borough. I mean, it is absurd and obscene. Let's see what other nasty things they've got. Removal of staff at free meals for schools. Here we go. It's been common practice for a number of years to provide discretionary free adult meals in schools for dining room helpers and school staff, although this is not equitable across the estate. What? It's not equitable across the estate. Uh, what, you're just saying you can't afford it? So in other words, those people who are going to help the kids eat, they don't get a meal. They don't get a free meal. I mean, that must cost not very much, really, in the great scheme of things. But now the incentive to come in and help with the kids who might be a bit unruly and what have you, having been in a classroom being taught how to masturbate and all the other nasty things that they're being taught at school, uh, there's no people perhaps from the real world going in the school, just the autonomous teachers who've agreed and are personally liable for the, t for the health of the, and the uh, uh, education of the children. Um, that nobody's there now to monitor and, and listen actually to the children because they'll say, well, we, we're not going to give you any meals. So you, what's the point in you coming? You're coming in there um, for free and you're not, we're not going to feed you. What complete nut of bastards they are, eh? Complete nut of bastards.
Sorry to, for the language there, but it's outrageous. Here we go. School janitors, caretakers, in other words, in the old English term. Uh, altered operational practices will release a saving. What does that mean? Altered operational practice. Um, it's going to make a saving of 6.8% against staffing costs. Really? It is not anticipated that this reduction would impact on service delivery level. Um, this is all gobbledy's gook. Basically, they're saying we're going to sack the caretakers or we're going to reduce their times to absolute minimum and expect them to do the same amount of work. We can see where this is going. Take your children out of schools. Take them out of schools. Don't put them in. Don't pay the council tax. If that's what they're doing, uh, I, I mean, where is the money going? Must be going to a consolidate fund. Clearly, it doesn't go to the community. This is absurd. Let's carry on and see what other draconian practices we've got in the 21st century. Um, out of school care removed. Um, I don't know what uh, oh, OOSC is out of school care. Right. Fair enough. Withdrawal from direct delivery of OOSC will absorb a staffing pressure of £680,000, but also result in a budget saving of £45,000 related to back office function. Uh, if anyone see my back office function, uh, you shouldn't have been in the bathroom. That's all I can say on that. This is outrageous. OK, so there we go. Out of school care. We don't care. This is an uncaring council who doesn't wish to have anything to do with real people, uh, real men and women in the land. This is a paper bureaucracy, dead entities of uh, legal fictions working. They have no care at all for living. Why people would tolerate it? They should just abandon the council in Aberdeen, Shear. They should say, we're not having this. We're paying our money. We want these services. We are the people. Now, if this is happening across the board, by the way, everybody should be turning their back, not just acquiescing and, oh, dear, that's a shame, isn't it? Oh, well, that's life. What can we do? What you can do is turn your backs like they did in Biggleswick, where they said, we're not having this. We're not paying our council tax to the government anymore. We're paying it to our own council. They they set up their own council. They turn their backs. They said we're not we're not abiding by you lot. So however many people were in Biggleswick, let's say it was a hundred thousand people, and um, they decided that the money that they would get from a hundred thousand people instead of going to the council, well via the government, via paying for ammunition to help kill and maim men, women and children in other countries in wars that have got nothing to do with us. The money went to the Biggleswick people. They set up their own council, they had their own votes and they elected their own council and they got on with it. And the Biggleswick council that was were sitting there going, hang on a minute, you can't do this. You're sorry, mate. We've done it. You're just giving, you're just doing the bidding of this tyrannical government. No more, thank you very much. No more tyrannical government. We're not listening. We're not interested. You're a waste of space. You're not telling us what to do. We're the people. We tell you what to do. And if you won't do it, you're fired. But this is what we should do across all of government. Just sack them. Sack them all. Don't pay. Don't pay their wages. Sorry. I mean, they can print the money anyway, can't they? They make money out of thin air. Where does it come from? It's not backed by anything. It comes from our energy. Well, let's not give it to them. Let's see. Let's just go through the last bits of this and see what else is on here. So we've done the out-of-school care. What was this? Speech and language therapy and early years. Contracts for these services in schools will be terminated. No, no, just get somebody in to show the kids how to masturbate and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, riding for the disabled removed. Remove of riding for the disabled. 12 grand saved. Oh, look at that. How lovely. How generous they are. And reduce continued profession... Reduce continued professional development and capacity building. That's a hundred grand saved. Yeah, you don't want anyone to actually uh, get better, do you? We just want to shut people up in basically in these horrible prisons, in these uh, very uninspired houses. And uh, in fact, what we'd rather do is just get them on the midazolam and send them on their way if we could. That would be so much better for dead entity corporations such as the Aberdeen Sheer Council seems to me.
This is just outrageous, isn't it? Reduction in education psychology service. Yeah, don't let anyone think for themselves. Reduction in additional support needs specialists. Yeah, let's get rid of that. And uh, then it talks about their budget. We have saved £753 million. Why is that? Because you're bankrupt. Because you're doing what the government tells you to do with your net zero policies. Um, yep, they've so they've got all that. Capital plan, 96 million. I don't know what that is. Projects like Peterhead Campus has, has been protected. Yeah, what is that? Prison. Other schools committed to, but timescales extended. Bridges, a topic of discussion. Yeah, don't build bridges so people can actually get out of places. Council tax frozen, but remember the water charges may go up. Yeah, because the cost of fluoride these days to put in the water is quite expensive. So, you know, poisons and heavy metals, they keep using it up in the sky to, to, to get you that way. And so it's quite expensive to uh, put that into the water. So we, we may have to put the price up. Yeah, mm, interesting. Uh, so let's get to the final bit then. It says that's their Aberdeenshire Council edit. It says since posting, we've learnt that the Scottish Government have given Aberdeenshire an extra three million, which means they can, if they chose, reverse some of these decisions. The axing of school crossing patrols and speech therapy in schools at the very least. Quite right too. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is one council. Be interested to see if you can get hold of the budget for the council near you and go through it with a fine tooth comb. Go and have a look and see what what they're cutting and then make that decision with your friends and with other people in your town. Do we really need this council? Are they spending the money wisely? How much are their salaries, for example? Have they bought themselves a new car? Are they members of a, a bigger golf course? Why are they acquiescing to what the government does? How much are they spending on net zero, on this saving the planet? It's all a little bit suspicious to me. It's got to stop. This is, this is just absolute being put under the thumb. They are our servants. We must remind them. Send them a letter. You are our servants. You do our bidding. Send them hundreds of thousands of letters. Just refuse to pay the council tax until they reverse all this nonsense, until they listen to you. That's not, you don't pay a servant who then tells you what to do. But it does seem that that is the situation that we've got ourselves in, that we're paying people to tell us and bully us what to do. Well, I can tell you, this ain't going to last much longer. People are not going to put up with it and it's got to stop.